Good. So welcome everyone to this November edition of the Uni Community Hours. For today, this is our agenda. I'm going to briefly present what is new on Uni 2022-11 that was released, if I recall correctly, on Monday or Tuesday. My memory is weak right now. Then Oscar will present his findings about uh, having Android systems as sold minions. And as always, we will have some time for any questions, ideas, or things that you want to discuss out of the regular agenda. So let's get started. News for Unit 2022-11. Well, before I start with the news, there is a warning about a patch that was just published this morning that you should all be installing because without it, you will suffer a regression, a regression that, uh, that is caused by the refactor of the system list uh, UI. And in that case, you will see errors after each repository sync. The repository sync will still work perfectly, but you will see those errors at the, at the UI. Um, all the details, as well as the instructions about how to apply the patch are the announcement I sent to the mailing list this morning, or you can go to Twitter, the link, the link to the announcement is there, or the website as you prefer. Now we can switch to the news. So, well, yes, of course, the um, system list UI is now refactored. And if you want all the details about the refactor, Cedric did a very nice presentation in September about it. So remember, you can go to the YouTube channel and have a look there, but for now, the biggest improvement you will see is in performance in, te in terms of how much time it takes to, to load the list. This refactor will also allow us to several further improvements in the next uh, releases, but very short now there is a cache table that is used to, to show the, the, data, the data to you. Um, we are now also losing, uh, allowing more tools for network management for the Uni server. So until this release, the Uni server was only working if you were using Wicked as the network management system, which is the default, by the way, on Leap 15.4. But if you wanted to use Network Manager or something else, then things were not working. Um, we had a small fix to do the, to allow any other network management system as part of the UniCheck database system D service. So give it a try if you don't want if you don't like Wicked for any reason. We have the update to Grafana 8.513 as well. The change log is just really big to mention things here or even at the release note, notes, but uh, yeah, other than the improvements and regular bug fixes, several CB, several fixes for several CBs are included as well. You have the list on the release notes and of, for Uni and of course uh, for the release notes for Grafana itself. And there is one breaking change that you should be aware of. This is documented at the Uni release notes in case it affects you. Then we also have a fix for the TLS configuration. So we can enable client certificate on authentication for the black box exporter. This was not working correctly in the past. So even if this was enabled at the formula, it was not working, but now the Prometheus formula has a new section. So you can configure correctly the black box exporter with the TLS certificate and key for the client certificate authentication instead of using username and, and password. And finally, we included instructions to disable the custom channel automatic synchronization because several users already noticed it, that in the past, the custom channels were not synced automatically. You had to configure this, 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 uh, this schedule synchronization. Starting with 2022-10, this was configured. So now this happens at the same time, we sync the vendor channels, those channels that come from SCC with the same task automatic job. But of course, there are some users that want to use a different schedule. In that case, 
check the release notes. Uh, I, if I recall correctly, we added this to the configuration as well. The, the, the instructions on how to disable this behavior are there. I think it's a matter of changing some Java configuration and restarting the services, and then you can do the things in the same way you had them for the old universions. And then a final warning, which is about the removal of the traditional client tools. If you recall, we announced already for 2022-06 that that was going to be the last release supporting the client tools. And we announced that we would, remove, we would be removing code after summer. That is something that is already happening now. So as of 2022-11, Uyuni does not work with traditional clients anymore. As worn at the release notes, if you update to 2022-11 and you still have traditional clients, make sure you migrate them to salt minions. Instructions about how to do it are at the documentation. And those are the news for Uyuni 2022-11. So it is time for some questions, if you have any. Very well, in that case, Oscar, you can now present your research about Android as a salt minion. Let me stop uh, sharing and then. Okay. Let me try you to find the screen. Be able to share now. Okay, you see my screen now? Yes. Cool. So yeah, um, during two weeks, I I did a, a small spike to to analyze if if we can somehow support Android devices in in Uyuni. Um, so the idea is to support at least some basic features from from uni in android devices uh, to for example uh, list uh, the the android devices that you can have in in a in a supermarket uh, where you need to handle the stock or for instance things like uh, find the, the GP, with the GPS location where these devices are. Some uh, small things that we can maybe do with, with these kind of devices. So the first thing I tried was to, to create an Android app that has inside a Salt Minion. And for that, I set up a, an Android Studio uh, either with an, <coughs> an Android emulator and device emulator. And Optionally, this is not mandatory. You can also root the device with this setup, and then you can do some actions uh, on salt that maybe are not allowed if you are not root. So uh, here in this repository, this public, you can see my attempt for this, uh, but I had uh, problems uh, with, with the binaries for the salt minion because yeah, we're, we're not made for, for for ARM, for Android. So I tried to unzip all the packages there and try to then package them inside the Android service, but yeah, it did not work on that way. So then my next uh, try was using an emulator on the, on the Android device. For that, I used I use, uh, Termux is an open source and free terminal emulator where you can you have a, a, a package manager where you can install and um, some packages that uh, we we also use in in linux and you can then execute some bash commands um, with this and some other uh, Packages installed in, on top of this terminal uh, emulator, or um, I mean this Termox app. Um, for instance, the IP root and OpenSSH, some different uh, packages. We were allowed to set up a, 
I see this channel uh, to my local machine. And having this is the first step to have a connection between the salt master that will be on the local machine and the salt minion that will be on this Thermux uh, application on this emulator. Uh, so to run this salt in Android, uh, there are different ways to do it. Mm, the first try was installing it using the, the pip, the, the Python package manager inside the Thermux. So I installed Python 3, I installed the, the library for CRMQ, and, and finally you install salt. With this salt install, you will need to then configure the, the minion to point to your, your salt master. Uh, here, the, during this um, experiment, I was only using the salt master, but then you can also um, point this to your Uyuni server. And then uh, one important thing is that as all this is happening in kind of a CH root, um, you need to change the root there to point to this uh, address, which is the folder where all things inside the Thermux app uh, happens and where we will have the salt minion installed. Uh, then we need to also add the minion ID to the configuration. And, and with that, you will be able to have a salt minion connected to, to the salt master you have in local. Then the, the other attempt was to use the SUSE official packages. And that means that what I did is download different RPMs that we had on on the salt stack repositories on OBS and I instructed everything all of them changed some tweak some things like uh, pointing to not to python 3.6 but to python 3.10 because in our salt bundle we were using this and then compress everything to finally create a zip file and move the zip file to to the the root div of the of the Thermux um, emulator, and with that, you can run the salt minion using Python 3.10 that we copy from there. Uh, well, this is the one that was installed with with pip, and then the, this is what is uh, configured, and you can also uh, activate the, the key or the salt key. And with that, you will also be able to, to connect to, to the salt master using the SUS official packages. And the last attempt that it did not work on that moment, but I guess it's feasible was using the salt bundle. Uh, I tried to do something similar uh, to copy this and put it inside the, the Thermox, uh, configuring the, the master and the root tier and everything. Um, but then uh, it also need more work because it needs to edit some different paths inside the, inside the files and edit the Python interpreter that was also inside the, the salt bundle, well, some different uh, files that you need to start to modify. And at the end, it did not work. I had a problem with the binary of python.original file. And I guess we'll need to build this for the proper uh, system. And this in the Thermux app is like a kind of a x86 inside this Android emulator. And well, I'm not sure how to proceed with this. So this did not work. And then if we come back to the the Android minion that it worked, I tried to use all commands on it. Uh, so I tried just on a regular salt master, I tried to do test ping to get the grains, 
to this to check the disk or to get the uh, to do an ls on the uh, remote command and all this work it work it fine uh, then I tried some things more complex like uh, checking uh, the list of packages that are installed on this uh, Android and it worked or you can install pack um, install apps if you pass the proper apk uh, file or even uninstall uh, screenshots a lot of things uh, this thing for instance is a uh, just a, well all which is remote commands is just uh, you can do whatever so what i did here was to get the gps location from from the android using idb and then uh, once that we have this working on a soft master the next step was to try this on on uni and for uni we need to do some tweaks because if you try directly it will throw you this error with uh, digital server id not found these things so you need to first um, you check the machine id grain you will see there is nothing there so this is because it's trying to get the machine id from this path or this path but this is mm, i mean even if on the uh, salt minion configuration we set up the root dir for the thermox apps even like that for these two locations it goes directly to the location from the uh, from the android so it failed it's a read only file system we can't also modify this so it did not work the only way to make it work is to have uh, a static grains. So we went to the salt minion configuration and we started to add all the uh, grains that are missing. One is this machine ID, but then we also need some others like the O's, the Codane. There are some that are need if we want to to bootstrap properly the the salt minion. And having all these grains at the end. We can have a Android minion here on, on Uni, and you can get some values from the network, for instance. If you go to the to the to the hardware overview, um, and then we can start trying some Uni features. Um, first thing I tried was just with remote commands again. I tried to get all the all the apps available on, in, on this Android, this worked fine. And then I tried to get the GPS location and work it, but yeah, still with re remote commands. And then when we start trying using a uh, real, let's say, salt states, not just remote commands, things start failing. One was on the deploy configuration. Uh, we tried to deploy configuration, there's an issue with the group. I tried to change the the group and the user, but it did not work. Uh, there is, uh, there might be some way to bypass this, but I don't know. Then for the reboot, uh, it also did not work because uh, it tries to do a shutdown and dash air. While if we want this to work, we will need to change the salt code to salt core code to for Android to support Android and support this using some command like this. We run this on a remote command, it will work, but not with the salt state. Uh, same for the list repos uh, is is just not supported because salt uh, doesn't support Android by itself. So all these things we will need to implement inside salty we want to, to support it um then the delete it worked fine <laughs> this at least we can unregister find the android minion so the conclusion is that yeah ideally we will need to to create an android service an android app uh, as a service uh, that runs in background on this android 
Um, but for that, we will need to have some relaxed permissions in the manifest. And we are not sure if this will be uh, allowed or not by Google Play Store. And then we need to build uh, Android ARM packages for this and maybe do some, some tweaks also there. Um, because yeah, using the Thermox is not something, some uh, professional solution. So it was just a, an attempt, an experiment to see if we can somehow communicate with this Android and get information. But yeah, if we want to go to something more serious, we wanted to do some kind of Android app with these uh, binaries there. Um, I guess we will need to change also for salt, uh, change those places where it's not really using the root deer, uh, like those cases that we, we check for the minion uh, machine ID. And then, um, yeah, the most important, salt has not support for Android. And it seems they don't want to uh, work on this, or at least it's not on their plan for, for, for now. Uh, and that is something that, let us think that we will not be able to continue with this uh, if we want to have support for for all these uh, UUNI features like install, list, remove packages, reboot, deploy configuration, etc. Uh, that's all. That's what I was playing with. Some question. Well, first of all, I think it was something very interesting, uh, especially because in the end, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but you were able to finally onboard the Android device on, on Union runs some things. So, well, at least something basic could be done to manage the ADV commands, I guess, on some pre-existing states or, or something like that. Uh, some things you mentioned, it, yeah, having a service running should be doable. In my own Android device, I have several services running. Uh, if the Google Play Store allows it or not, well, we can, uh, the, the, the binary could, the APK, we could also could, could always be delivered outside of the Play Store. Yes, I know that then you need to enable some exceptions to install it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But well, if you really want to manage your own device, then that's something that's maybe expected in this case for this kind of, of application. The biggest hurdle could be what you already told. Yes, I, I saw the feature request for SALT that was closed three years ago, more or less, uh, telling that this is not on, on their scope. That is true, but at least for something basic, it seems that even if it is not supported, kind of works. Deploying files, I'm thinking just about the use case I could, give this thing here. Maybe deploying files is not so important as installing the the applications and uh, maybe having them configured somehow. Maybe you don't really need to, to use files, but that's something doable. The biggest problem I see here is about, not sure if you think the same, but the biggest blocker right now, I would say to have even a proof of, of concept that we could ship would be building the the package itself, uh, because we would need to do that at OBS, and I think OBS cannot build APKs, or can it? Does anyone know? I think not, but... I and, think, not, I think and, not. And maybe we need to, to build it for different uh, architectures also. I'm not sure if all Androids are working with the same architecture well, or how these things work. I think I think that changed in the past. In the past, I think that the APKs had all the architectures included, but since the applications are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, now the policy is that uh, you get shipped the APK with the things for your architecture only. So yeah, maybe we would need to build different different APKs uh, or something like, like that. But well, that's not the biggest problem because in the end, OBS has support for yeah uh the two well i mean as long as we can add the operating system to the build service then there are workers for arm on 32 bits arm on 64 bits x86 64 
So that could be doable, but yeah. Well, the good thing is here, uh, of course, it's not easy at all, but for the community, remember that the open build service itself is open software uh, as well. So you can contribute there. Not sure if maybe someone else will, will do it because in the end, I think it's a nice idea being, being able to build APKs on the build service as well. So who knows, maybe we will get some improvements in the in the future. And in any case, I think Oscar, that the information you provided here and the test that tests that you already did enable someone from the community if that is wish to, yeah, experiment a little bit more and maybe who knows prepare a proof of concept somehow so uh, yeah again i think your work was very something very very interesting and valuable thank you uh, just as a side note if needed this the package could be still manually built and automation could be decided after maybe it could it, even be done outside of OBS. Yes, that should uh, doable as well. In the end, one one thing that comes to my mind right now, which is a crazy idea, maybe it's that, well, the package that we ship to all the operating systems supported for Uni, the source code is at the Git repository. If I remember correctly, open source slash salt or something like that, Pablo can tell better than me. So who knows, maybe a GitHub action, GitHub action could be created there or something like that to build the, the APK. But yeah, again, here is something where I would invite the community to think if this is interesting and if so, maybe have a look. Maybe you don't really need a lot of uh, coding knowledge if you can play around maybe with some GitHub actions or building the APK somehow manually and then playing around a little bit with it. So yeah, go for it if you can. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna close the, the slides. Very well. And yeah, with that, we still have some minutes for some questions, ideas you want to discuss, requests you want to make. So yeah, floor is open for everyone. Well, just as a side note, kickstart for CentOS on rail before six will soon be dis, uh, removed, will be removed in the next release. Uh, not before six, including six as well, right? No, 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 six still remains. Okay, so five and older, okay. Yes. Well, the good thing about it is that I don't know if anyone from the community out there was trying to use Red Hat 5 or any clones, but officially we never supported it. So yeah, maybe in this case, we don't need to announce it. When we, if something breaks for six, then yeah, maybe yes, even if it is out of, out of support, let's say for a unit would still be nice to announce it, something is uh, broken there and we know about it. Okay, if there are no other questions, then yeah, as I guess someone will ask later at the mailing lists or get there or somewhere else. Uh, the next unit release and the next uh, Uni community hours, um, most likely next Uni community hours will not happen because they will be in the middle of the um, winter holidays end of the year. So I guess that most people will be enjoying some well-deserved holidays. Uh, uh, um, for the uh, Uni release for December, that is, is still unclear. I cannot tell you right now if we will be having a, a release or not. It will all depend on the new things we have, bug fixing we, we have to include. If we have enough, then yeah, I will try to have a release. Otherwise, we will postpone it to 
January. Uh, also, just uh, um, another announce uh, or request. Uh, Google Google announced the uh, summer of code will have an, a new instance in 2023. Usually, organizations are applying by February after FOSDEM. Uh, so we need to have ideas, project ideas to submit for students. And the good news is that this year, Google decided to open the uh, Summer of Code to people that are not student, but new to open source. So if you have friends that are already coding, but not coding in, on your, in the open source world, just you can just tell them how fun we are and how good it is to work with, it, with us. And we'll apply with the OpenSUSE um, organization again. Yeah, and another final announcement from me. Uh, if by any chance you are in um, uh, in Ohio next uh, weekend, then I sent a tweet yesterday, and this was announced at the making at the sorry at the website as well. That Donald Bosburg will be presenting a journey to containerized applications, the uni experience, on Saturday the third at the OLF the former Ohio Linux, uh, Linux Fest, if I recall correctly, in Columbus, Ohio, United States. So all the details, if you want them, they are at Twitter and the website. And with that, if we don't have any other announcements or questions, then I think we can close our session for today. As always, remember you can review all the details at the YouTube channel. I will be publishing the recording shortly after in the next few hours. And of course, enjoy the upcoming weekend. Happy hacking and see you in the next session. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye, bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.